Well, they want us to graph, and then they want us to solve this inequality on the basis of the graph. In fact, in fact, sometimes it'll say hence. If you're lucky, it'll say hence or otherwise, which means that even if you look at something like this and you're like, gross, I hate graphing stuff, it takes me forever, I'm not very good at it. Hence or otherwise means you can still solve this algebraically. It's just very awkward, okay? So I'm going to encourage you, um, like we're going to do right now, to invest the time to graph, because it's definitely in two unit, you can't get away from extension one either, okay? So first, let's draw up a Cartesian plane. And what I like to do, what I think about is, you sort of add features of the graph um, onto your Cartesian plane until you've got so many features that there's only one graph that can possibly fit all of the features that you've got. Okay. Um, the guide that I've given you before still applies for something like this, but it's quite simple. So in fact, you'll find we don't even need to go through all of these steps before we've got enough of a picture um, to know what the graph looks like. So what does F stand for? F stands for factorized. In this case, there's not much to do. Uh, and in two unit, you will frequently get graphs that are so simple, there's not really any factorizing required. But the principle helps you with tougher questions. The next question is asymptotes. Now you guys know there are two categories of asymptotes. One comes from the denominator. What kind of asymptote do we get from the denominator? Yeah, vertical ones, right? So what we want, vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes occur when the denominator is 0, because that blows up the equation, right? So if I say x plus 5 equals 0, right? Uh, you get a vertical asymptote because it's outside the domain. I just rearrange, I change and make x the subject. So x equals negative 5 is where I'm going to find my vertical asymptote. So I'm going to draw that in. Over here on the left hand side, x equals negative 5. Cool. That's not the only kind of asymptote. There's not just vertical ones. There's horizontal ones as well, right? Um, and later on in the course you'll encounter horizontal asymptotes that are off at an angle, and we call them oblique ones. We'll come to them a bit later. In two units, you'll get these, though. A horizontal asymptote is not about the denominator on its own. It's about the whole function and what it does at the opposite ends of the graph, like at negative infinity and at positive infinity. Okay? So I'm not sure if you remember this, but it's worth revising. There are two easy ways, actually there's more than two, but there are two um, pretty straightforward ways to find this. Okay? The first is get your calculator out, grab your calculator. And then just test out really big negative values or really big positive values of x. So for example, you could test x equals 1,000. Right? If x equals 1,000, then y will equal, what's on the numerator? Wait, numerator? <laughs> 999. And your denominator will be 1,005. Now, you can get your calculator to turn that into a decimal if you like, but clearly that's close to 1. right? Um, you also want to test the other side, just so you make sure you know what's going on. If you test x equals negative 1,000, so I've gone to this end, right, negative, then y is going to be equal to, let's have a look, negative 1,001 divided by, which if you notice there's, two, there's a double negative, so that's just this. Your calculator will also help you see, in fact, I'm going to ask you guys to help me here. Can you give me the decimal values for these guys? Um, just give me a couple of decimal places. What's this? 0 0.993? Yeah. yeah, that'll do. Dot, dot, dot. And uh, what about this one? What's this decimal? That's one, that's one cool. Dot, dot, dot. Okay. Now, the only reason why I point this out is because you can work this out without the calculator, but do you see, this is just below 1, and this is just above. So that's going to be helpful when I draw this thing. Okay? So I've already decided that I've got a vertical asymptote. Now I know there's also a horizontal asymptote. It's going to be at x equals 1, so I'm just going to draw that in. I did say, though, that there's two pretty straightforward y equals 1, sorry. Two pretty straightforward ways to work this out. If you don't want to, if this looks a bit inelegant and blunt instrument to you, like I'm just testing values, another thing you can do is take your function and divide the top and the bottom by the highest power of x. Let me say that again. Um, divide by highest power of x. So if, for instance, you had x squareds on the top and the bottom, you'd divide by x squared. In this case, the highest power of x is just it's just x. So when I do that, 
um, I'm going to get x over x minus 1 over x divided by x over x plus 5 over x. So yeah, does that make sense? Now remember I said, oh, I'm interested in the extremities, right? The far off spots. So I'm going to use my limit notation to indicate that. As x approaches infinity, what happens to this thing? Well, it's going to be x approaching infinity. These x over x's are just, uh, wait, hold on. x over x's are just 1. But these guys here, yeah, they're going to get tiny because it's 1 over some ridiculously large number. Um, this guy over here is 5 over a ridiculously large number. But because it's ridiculously large, he doesn't care. The 5 just sort of vanishes away. Okay. So you can see here, this is going to become 1 minus 0 on 1 plus 0. So those, those terms there are insignificant. And just like we got before, we're approaching 1. OK? OK. Do you mean like this? Um, the ridiculously large number is anything I like. So I put in 1,000 because that's large. You can put in a million or 10 million if you want. It just becomes a bit silly and pointless because you're already getting this behavior very obviously. Right? For this one here. So I've, I've tested out as x approaches infinity, right? So therefore, these things are going to clearly vanish. Okay. Now, by the way, I did say I'm with you this whole time. Roll call's going to come in here. So I'll finish this because um, I'm almost there. And then we'll let them come in and do their thing. And then we'll come back, okay? If you guys want to. All right. Um, Factorized, I've got asymptotes. I stands for intercepts. Very good. So you guys can quickly tell me when x equals 0, when x equals 0, watch what happens. You just get left with negative 1 over 5. So I'll put that guy there. And when y equals 0, when y equals 0, that just means the numerator has to be 0, right? If the numerator is 0, the whole thing is 0. Do you agree? So then the x value that gives you that is x equals 1. Keep in mind, this is negative 5, uh, or a distance of 5. So I need to make sure my scale is somewhat consistent. So I'm going to put 1 about there, I'd say. OK, now if you wanted to, you could then go and do regions. Um, but it's, it's fairly straightforward when you have a look at this, that it's going to go from positive, because you've got two, positive, two negative factors, then down to negative, then to positive. You can draw that in if you like. But this is so simple. And you can see, for example, you've got to pass through here. You've got to go toward, but just below this asymptote. So it's going to look like I'm going to have to do this kind of thing. Do you see that? So here we go, like so. And over here, remember it said we're going to end up just above that y equals 1 line. So that's why it doesn't like sneak down underneath. And that's it. That is the shape. OK? OK, now lastly, less than or equal to 5, OK? What I would do here, if it says hence, if it says hence, I'm just going to put in um, 5 onto this graph. Where would 5 be? Well, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Sorry, my scale's not great. There's y equals 5. So what I want is which parts of this graph are less than or equal to this blue line. OK? Good. So you can see, see this guy over here? This guy is fine. From here, and you notice I put a, um, a filled circle because the boundary is included. So from here, all the way down here, that's all good, right? So I need to know what that x value is that corresponds to that. I'll come back to him in a minute. What about this branch? How much of this is OK? The whole lot is OK. Everything here is below the blue line, OK? So therefore, um, I can find this value and say to the left of that, and then I could say to the right of this, all of that is OK as well. Let's see how far we can get. Um, let's find this value. When is, it, when is the graph actually intersecting with 5? So what I'm going to have to do is say x minus 1 on x plus 5. This graph hits 5 at a certain point. It equals 5. That's the boundary. right? So therefore, I can say x minus 1 is 5x plus 25. Yeah. So therefore. Uh, let's see, 4x is equal to, subtract 25, negative 26. So x looks like it's going to be negative, yeah, 13 on 2. Okay. Does that fit with the information I already know? Look, it's just to the left of negative 5. Looks pretty bang on to me. 
Okay, so I can say from there, for the inequality, x is going to be less than or equal to negative 6 and a half. Now what about the other side? So it starts from negative 5 and goes all the way to the right. Okay. Now, last word of caution. See how this inequality includes the boundary. Right? So that's why this one includes the boundary. However, this one does not include the boundary. Why not? Everything else has boundaries. It never actually gets to negative 5, does it? That's why this asymptote here, that's why the graph helps us see that.